Well, this question is uh, going around. This question has come to me too often in the last few months. I'm glad uh, the educators in the world are beginning to understand there is something to learn about our education from a microorganism. This is uh, a very wonderful thing because this is the unfortunate reality of our education systems that educated people are the least receptive people for various aspects of life. Because the process of education, instead of liberating human mind, is concretizing human mind. This has happened because of the fundamental mistake we have made of misinterpreting memory as intelligence. Largely, education in the last two hundred years has been about memory passing off as intelligence. If you can read a silly textbook and remember every word, whoa, you would be appreciated as the most intelligent even as a child. So based on this, we have done many things, but artificial intelligence is in the process of evolving. Probably this will evolve much faster because of the pandemic and many things we have to do virtually now. So definitely what would have happened in next ten years may happen in the next three to four years or five years because uh, now machine learning becomes very, very important. What machine learning means is just this, you can load up a certain amount of data into a machine and instead of machine repeating just the data, it can anal analyze, process and give you perspectives. Well, this is all your intellect was also doing, gathering data, analyzing, processing and developing perspectives but you did not leave it as perspectives, you made it into terrible prejudices and into a destructive process. When I say a destructive process, I want everybody to look at this sincerely. Please tell me in this world, have educated people caused more harm and damage to life and this planet or uneducated and illiterate people have done it, please tell me. Wherever there is more education, there maximum damage, unfortunately. Because our idea of education has become all about how to exploit everything. Uh, somebody will research how to get protein out of microorganisms. Maybe you can get something out of this virus also. Uh, Please uh, forgive me for my sarcasm because even as a very young child, when I went to school, I am not a rebel without a cause. I am not one of them who simply rebels because I don't like it. But what doesn't make sense? I will not invest myself in it, that's all. Even as a very young child, I could see the people who were talking about things did not mean anything to them, what they were saying. They were just repeating what was already printed somewhere. In fact, many of them were looking at the book and talking. The only difference was maybe they could read better than a five-year-old. Otherwise, they were also memorizing and saying it. Well, a tape recorder would have done it better, but even with a live teacher, we slipped out of the window. Tape recorder means we would have switched it off. That would have been the grace. 
Well, I'm not saying everything about education is negative, but we must understand that education as we know it, life as we know it, human civilization as we know it, has come to a place that form of education which is all about building data in your head is meaningless because a small gadget can carry hundred times than what your brain can carry. And the unnecessary stress of carrying this information, the only reason why many teachers, parents, elders looked valuable in the past is not because of their wisdom, not because of their life sense, only because they had a certain memory bank which the child did not have. <laughs> but today's child has a memory bank, Google auntie they're calling it. <laughs> if you say something, they will check it and say, this is wrong, what you're saying. So, gathering data in your mind and heaping it up, when the data was minimal and simplistic, this was a okay possibility. But now the data is about everything. The data has become so massive, if you store that kind, if you carry that kind of data in your head, you'll go crazy and you won't be able to analyze anything or figure out anything. Data should be carried in the machine. There is no need for human minds to carry this data. Education should be about unfolding human genius. We must understand this, that intellect can only function out of data. If there is no data, your very sharp intellect still feels helpless because without data it cannot function. So. I feel this is a fantastic time, we are in the most fantastic times because probably for the very first time that human genius becomes more valuable than human scholarship. This is a good push that the virus is giving you in this direction. The educators of the world should take this up not as a challenge, but as an opportunity that any change would be difficult when there is no disruption. And normally most human beings wouldn't like to disrupt whatever is working reasonably well, they would like to keep it going. They don't want to disrupt. Now that the disruption is happening, this is the time. A whole lot of children, I'm sure even today it is true, at least when I was growing up it was true, a whole lot of children experienced the classroom like a prison. They would always be looking when it'll be over, when it'll be over. Only uh, in, at least in my class, I'm telling you. Maybe I was in that kind of a class, I don't know. In my class, only about probably ten percent of the children who were sitting in the first bench were really engaged with what was happening in the class. As you come backwards, <laughs> they were less and less engaged, partially engaged like this. When they come to where I was, <laughs> we were just not engaged. We were engaged with something, but not with what they were talking about. Maybe not everybody had such a negative look at this because I found ways to spend more time on the sports grounds, more time in the library, more time in the s laboratories, but my time in high school in the classroom, I found various ingenious ways to limit it to the minimum possible level. <laughs> because I know many schools and many educators have moved away from that prison-like classroom and trying to make it more engaging and interactive and all these things are happening which are good, which are wonderful things many educators have done around the world, but it is not on the scale that it requires to happen. Only a few privileged children are having these changes happening. But right now what we need 
is not change. What we need is a total transformation of education. The way we look at it, that is every child... See, it's like this. Uh, <laughs> suppose... Uh, I'm using a bad example, but... Suppose, you know, the, by the law, by the criminal law, murder means twenty years, Manslaughter means twelve years, robbery means six years, some kind of punishments are there. But if you're born in an educated family, twenty years. <laughs> twenty years everybody has to do, whether you like it, you don't like it. And the way it's been going on is that a child is bewildered, at least I was bewildered by this process. I thought this is just insane. I go sit there, this moment they're teaching me English language. I'm still getting interested. It's forty-five minute sessions there were at that time. By fortieth minute I'm getting little interested. <laughs> then the bell goes dong. And as this person exits, this teacher exists, before we can do something, another one enters <laughs> and start talking chemistry. Well, forty-fourth minute, I sort of getting engaged. That person leaves, another person comes and teaches mathematics. And when I'm just thinking, okay, two plus two, why is it not twenty-two? <laughs> then the next person comes and teaches a local language. The next person comes and teaches moral science. I thought this is an insane way of conducting, educating our children. So inconsistent. We're trying to change this in our own schools, but parental resistance and uh, there are government laws, too many things. This is a time to transform the education. Now, the WHO is saying the pandemic may last for two years. How many children will go back to school in these two years, we don't know. How many parents want to risk sending their children back to school, we do not know. So this could change the very fabric of the society because education means that we are committed to unfolding a human being in a positive way towards their well-being and in turn well-being of the society and the world. Is such a thing happening is a big question mark. If this has to happen, many things will have to change if children are going to learn from home. Many things will have to change, that means somebody has to stay home. Either the man or the woman, the father or the mother have to stay back home. That means you must scale down your shopping aspirations. Yes, because somebody has to stay home. And once you're not committed to raising your children like that, bringing up your children, by constant nurture, if you're not committed, you should not have. So maybe the population itself will come down because nobody's willing to commit themselves for ten, fifteen years, absolutely, giving up their professions, their aspirations. I think the very reduction of population will itself will happen. So education systems changing. Education is not a separate institution by itself. The entire society is involved in it at some level a whole social structure may have to change. I know these are unpopular things to say, but how many parents would want to risk sending their children to a school where there is a possibility of infection, possibility of disability or death? Once this question is raised strongly, then transformation of education system and in turn the society and the social fabric is bound to happen. This is not bad, this is a very positive possibility. We just have to handle this gracefully. We should handle it, the, handle this with maximum positive impact upon the society. 
the most important thing that needs to happen in this process is, education should become about unfolding human genius and humanity above everything. Right now, the most inhuman things on the planet are done by educated people, not by uneducated people. If you go to tribal societies where they're illiterate, there is a certain sense of humanity which is missing in urban societies of this world. These are all educated people. What are we educating them for? To live better or worse? So, education per se is not a separate entity. It is not separate from social structures. The kind of social structures we build, the kind of attitudes we build, the kind of economic engines we build in this world are very much related to the education. Education need not be just about employment. Education must be about expansion of human consciousness. This is the time to do it. Even this should have come from within ourselves. It's all right, it is virus-inspired, but we must make this happen. Transformation, not change. <laughs>